Great Mall Cars, the copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. The Sunday police calling all cars, attention all cars, broadcast 76, the missing juvenile. Molly Mariko Kanda, Japanese, age two years, ten months. Disappeared from home in the company of her mother. If found, notify the Crime Prevention Bureau. That's all. Rolls and clicks. Say, Sam, look at this newspaper. Amazing progress made by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Well, what does it say, Lou? Why, it says Rio Grande sale growing faster than any other gasoline in this market. Rio Grande expanding into new territories. Rio Grande has so many city contracts that powers more police cars than any other brand. Hey, Sam, how in the world do they do it in the face of all this competition from other oil companies? Well, Rio Grande has something no other Western gasoline has. The exclusive right to make crack gasoline by the Sinclair cracking process. It took millions of dollars and years of research to perfect crack gasoline. But does that make such a difference? Honestly, now, Sam, aren't all gasolines about alike? No, not on your life. Why, there's all the difference in the world between Rio Grande cracked and ordinary uncracked gasoline. Why? What does cracking do? Well, for example, take this newspaper. Yeah, we'll hold a match to this coin. All oh, right. Eh? See how slowly it burns? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, now we'll tear these sheets apart. Mm-hmm. Now we'll touch a match again, and and now look at it burn. <whistles> well, that's what Rio Grande's cracking process does. It tears apart the sluggish, slow-burning drops of crude oil so they ignite faster, burn evenly. In uncracked gasoline, these slow-burning parts are wasted. They just slip down the cylinder walls, causing crankcase dilution. But there's no such waste with Rio Grande crack. Cracking liberates extra power, and you get quick starting, snap and speed from Rio Grande's cracking process that can't be duplicated by any other gasoline available here. And now it is our pleasure to introduce Chief James E. Davis of the Los Angeles Police Department, who has a message for you. Chief Davis. Good evening, friends. In pursuit of his duty, your police officer encounters daily problems which require the utmost understanding of human nature and a broad general knowledge in order to cope with them successfully. Clear-cut cases of premeditated crime for material gain are relatively easy. But when your officer encounters crimes of passion, then he has a really complex problem to solve. For some of the hidden, subconscious motivations for crime are stumbling blocks to the most astute psychiatrist. And often the policeman is called upon in an emergency to deal with cases which many a a learned doctor would hesitate to handle. Such is the story we have to tell tonight. A weird tale of oriental psychology an obscure, baffling motivation. It is a true story of how one pair of lovers sought to solve the insoluble problem of their lives and failed. This case is unique. In the history of the Los Angeles Police Department, there have occurred but a very few crimes in the Japanese colony, and this group of citizens offers less trouble to the police department than almost any other of our heterogeneous population. back all day. Oh, I, uh, bring you more books. Oh, could you? You are so kind to me. I'm not knowing what I'll do if you were not so kind. Oh, I love you, Ayako. And I love you. Oh. oh, we cannot go on. Not go on? What do you mean? I cannot live without you, Koji. But I mean, as we are now, 
feeling of your mom and Sian there when your husband back with Anne. Oh, I know it is hard. But what can we do? Well, you, you could uh, go away with me. Go away with you? No, could you? I could not. Why? That would be a disgrace. That would outrage our ancestors. Step out to operate them that way and insult them the way we are doing, my lovely flower. Yes. I guess you are right. Oh, come with me. You do not love your husband. Why should you spend the rest of your life in unhappiness? Oh, I don't know, Cody. I don't know what to do. I love you. I only live when you are with me. But there are other things. What are other things? Oh, what matters but our love? Many, many things. Customs of our people. Our religion. Oh, forget them, Ayako. Come with me. We will go away together. I will work. Soon we will have much money. Then we can go back home to Japan. To go back to Japan. With you, Koji. Oh, that would be beautiful. Then, then come away with me, Ayako. Now. Now? Why not? Why should we waste time? All right, Koji. I go. Oh. I will give offerings at the temples of Nara for this day. Hurry, Ayako, hurry. We must go before your husband returns. This will take me no time. I will get Molly. Molly? You are... You are not going to take the child with us, are you? Oh, yes, of course. But, Ayako, we cannot do that. Then you do not love my daughter. Oh, of course I do. I love her as dearly as if she were my own because she is yours. But it would not be fair to the child to take her with us. Leave Molly with her father. No. It would not be fair to her to leave her with her father. And when she grow up, she grow up bad because she did not have her mother with her. People would tell her what a terrible thing her mother had done. She grow up hating memory of me. But I go. Uh, Molly, go with me, or I do not go. Very well, then. Get the child ready. Yeah, what can I do for you? Oh, please. I want to see boss, the policeman. Who do you mean, the chief? Oh, no. Man, tell me, come here. What's it about? My wife. She, she go away. No coming back. Oh, well, you're in the right place, all right. This is the missing persons bureau. You finding my wife for me? I can't guarantee that. Just a minute, I'll let you talk to the captain. Right this way. What is it, Sergeant? This man's wife is missing. Very well, I'll talk to him. Come in, sir. Oh. You, boss, for this man? Well, I'm head of the missing persons bureau. Oh. You say your wife is missing? Wife. Right. She go away. She took Molly with her. Molly? Who's Molly? Oh, Molly, our little girl. Wife, she go away, took Molly with her. You, you find free? Well, we'll do what we can. I think maybe somebody murdered them. Or oh, I still think they worried. No, I wouldn't think anything like that. Had there been any trouble like that, we'd have heard of it. She's probably gone to visit some friends and forgotten to tell you. Oh, no. No going visiting friends. Our friends say no, no see for one today. Have you been getting along all right with your wife? Please? Have any arguments or fights with your wife? Oh, no, no. Ayako and I, we peaceful. We not fight. Hmm. Was she interested in any other man? Oh, no. My wife not being that kind of woman. She's a good woman. She only interests in me. Well, if you'll just fill out this report here, we'll keep our eyes open for her. Yes. Thank you. Oh, we... Do you think maybe she and Molly kidnapped? Might have been. Is there any money? Oh, a little bit. Maybe somebody think I have much. Maybe. In that case, of course, you will see the ransom note in a few days. And if you do, be sure to let us know. Oh, yes. I do. And you look for them, please? Sure thing. We'll do the best we can. <laughs> without you, and we commit to you, then we together always in go Kuraku, in heaven. But we are together now on earth. Cannot we go on like this? No, no, my Kodi. I have thought it all over. It is wrong. It is disgrace. My husband would kill us if he found us. We always feel hunted while we live on earth. That's how we commit to you. And uh, what about Molly? Molly, she die with us. Oh, no. No, Ayako. 
We have no right to take her life. My daughter, go with me in death. Oh, but there must be some other way. What's the matter with you? Are you afraid? Do you not love me enough to die with me? Oh, of course I do, but uh, oh, I... Oh, my beloved. It will not hurt. I have stopped the door and window. Just turn on the gas. No. See each other down. We are well. Very well. I... I'm coming on. My beloved Koji, I love you. And I... I love you, Ayako. This way, my sweet Lord, we be together for eternity. Quiet, quiet. Shut up or I'll run you all in. Now you, what's your name? Uh, 
Bunte Hatamato. You run away with this woman here? Oh, yes. Why? We love each other. We are loving each other many months. She was my friend. I talked to him. All right, Mr. Condor, be quiet, please. Let's hear his story. Not Mr. Condor's little daughter. I can't explain everything. Ayako and I, we go to San Pedro. As soon as I'm making enough money, we go to Japan. All right, all right. But what about the baby? I'll tell you all that. The next morning, after we run away, I go to a store for groceries. I uh, leave Ayako in car and taking money by hand. Then uh, come the uh, sounding of police siren, and I think the uh, police after me for running away with Ayako, and I, uh, I hurrying back to car, uh, forgetting Mali. We're going back. Mali not there. We uh, cannot find him, Mali. He lies. He killed Mali. Who do you think we are, hot tomato? Couple of kids? Don't expect us to fall for that story, do you? What did you do with that baby? No, no. Not the baby. Gordy, please. Gordy, tell him truth. Well, it doesn't sound right to me. Get on your things, both of you. You're going to headquarters. <laughs> alert radio patrolmen deliver their two prisoners to the university station where detectives Harvey I. Birch and Clifford A. Gillen are assigned to the case. The two men direct their attention first on photo office. Four hours they question and cross-question him, trying to blast his story, trying to break him down. Well, for the last time, where's that child? I'm very sorry, not knowing. Why don't you admit you're lying? Why don't you tell us the truth? I tell the truth. You're saying that you were frightened by the police sirens. Ran back to the car when Mrs. Condor was waiting for you. You drove away and then realized that you'd forgotten Molly, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. And you returned to this market or whatever it was and you couldn't find her. Oh, I got uh, How long were you away from the market? Oh, maybe five minutes uh, driving around block. Did you question anybody in the market about the child? Oh, oh yes. Uh, nobody knowing anything. Well, didn't you report a disappearance to the police? I was saying police make Ayako go back to her husband. Ayako wants to stay with me forever. Hmm. Get in this country long, could you? Oh, uh, seven years now. Yeah, what do you do for a living? Oh, I first rate number one mechanic. Business pretty good these days? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, many Japanese needing automobile fix. Yes, I guess that's pretty good business to be in. And then you'll have a garage of your own and be a big shot, I guess, huh? Oh, yes, sir. I hope so. Yeah. Goji, so, where's Molly Condor? Uh, uh, I don't know. I wishing I know. I wishing I could tell you. Take him back to your cell, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Come on. Oh, please, sir. Come on back to your furnished room. Mm, he sure is a hot baby to crack. I'll well, say. Yes, there is a chance that he's telling the truth. Yeah, but it doesn't sound right to me. Well, look at it this way. There's plenty of Japanese on some paper. The kid did wander off, and some childless woman took pity on it. She gave it a home without even knowing that she could notify the police. Yeah, it might happen, but it isn't likely. Of course, his explanation of their failing to report the child missing is logical enough. Naturally, they'd be afraid of being discovered. Well, let's have a little talk with Mrs. Condon. Good idea. See her story, Judge. You got that picture of the baby? Yeah, right here. Okay, let's go. <laughs> the Lincoln Heights jail to which Mrs. Condor had been removed, Gillen and Birch are admitted to the unhappy woman's cell. Good morning, Mrs. Condor. I'm Detective Birch, and this is Detective Gillen. Hmm? I want to ask you some questions. What for? What for are you keeping me here, please? I want to know about Molly. Where is she? Molly lost. Lost? How'd she get lost? Could you tell the truth last night? Mrs. Condor, didn't you worry about her? Didn't you wonder where she went? Yes, I wonder, yes. Well, then why didn't you tell the police? Ask them to help you find her. I love him, Koji. If police know, they must be go back to my husband. Yes, it's gone there. Aren't you interested in your baby's welfare? Don't you care where she is? Oh, yes, I, I care in, but I love Koji. Mrs. Condor, this is a picture of your little daughter, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that's my mm. She's a sweet little thing. <laughs> Lovely smile. <laughs> Little girl will be the pride and joy of any mother's heart. <laughs> Don't you love her, Mrs. Condor? Yes, I love you, her. But I love him, God. Think of this poor child alone down there in San Pedro. Cold, hungry. Maybe she wandered to the end of a pier and fell in the harbor. Maybe she's drowned. Don't you care? Yes, 
I, I can't. Then where is she? I don't know it. You know, Mrs. Conner. Where's your baby? Koji telling the truth. It's all same Koji say. Koji didn't tell the truth. He lied. You're lying. <laughs> you let me talk, Koji, please. Tell us the truth, Mrs. Conner. Where is Molly? Let me talk, Koji. Who talked to Koji when you told the truth? I'm telling the truth. Uh, come on, Harvey. Let's go. Yeah, well, I got an idea. Okay. Now, Mrs. Condor, think it over. All we want from you is the truth. You and Cody can see each other just as soon as you've decided to tell us the truth. What's on your mind, sir? I think she's wilting. I believe you're right at that. Well, let's get a Japanese priest. Maybe if he prays over her, she'll come clean. Day, little Molly Condor's body is post mortem at the morgue. 
what the autopsy surgeon discovers sends him flying to the telephone to summon Birch and Dillon to his office. Well, Doctor, what's all the excitement? Plenty. Well, what is it? That child wasn't asphyxiated. She was shot through the head. What? How do you know? I found two bullet holes in her skull. Koji, who shot little Molly? Oh, please. That baby was shot, not gassed. Oh, not understanding. Oh, yes, you understand. Who shot Molly? Uh, you let me talk a yakko. No, tell us who shot Molly. We, uh, we meant to die. Did you oh. shoot her? Oh, yes. A yakko making me do it. I try to tell her to leave Molly with her father. Ayako say no. She take Molly alone. Then she thinks she says so much for Molly. We mean to send you. Yeah, you told us about that. Why did you shoot the child? Ayako. Ayako tell me to. She say, go ahead and get it over with. I no want to kill him. She say, what's wrong with you? You are getting cold? She say, I am weak. I know weak. But no one for killing little child. She make me do it. I take my little head back of house. I give a toy. She sit on the floor, play with toy. Then, then I, I do it. Oh, I, I come back to house. Ayako asks if I do it. I say, yes. She say, will she die now? I say, yes. She say, are you sure? I say, yes. And then, then I faint him. Oh, you kill me now, please. I'm ready for dying. Please, you kill me right away. I'm afraid the law will have to take its course. Why don't you shoot her twice? I know shoot twice. I shoot only once. Well, there were two bullet holes in her head. No, no, I, I'm not shooting twice. Hey, Harvey, I wonder. Do you suppose Mrs. Condor shot her again to be sure she was dead? I don't know. This case has got me. I've seen a lot of tough ones, but I never worked in a more horrible thing than this. the accusation of having also shot her child, Mrs. Condor vehemently denies participating in the actual murder. Both she and Potomato enter pleas of guilty. But when Mrs. Condor comes up for trial, she changes her plea to not guilty and demands a jury. Feeling in the Japanese colony runs high, and prominent Japanese throng the courtroom to hear the trial of this woman who had become a disgrace to their nationality. Mrs. Condor on the stand changes her story, tries to lay the blame at Koji's feet. Koji come and tell me he give him farewell, Poppy, before going to Japan. I, I leave home with him. He must be come to rest in Lomito. He tell me we do, and you. I don't want to die, but he say. I must, uh, I say, if I must go, I won't die with my Molly. I say, you shoot me, you shoot me with Molly in my arms. Molly in my arms. I pray, Koji, we try to die with gas, but our head aching and our eyes burning. After Koji shooting Molly, we try to die many times. You know can do. We try to die again. The officers finding us. Now, all we want to do is die. Oh, please, just give us order to go. judge did not award the easier penalty to a Yako. She was sentenced to San Quentin, where for the rest of her life she must contemplate her crime. For the judge recommended that she never be granted parole or pardon. Koju Hotamata, her lover, was sentenced to hang. The trial never brought out the mystery of the second bullet, nor did it ever uncover a convincing answer to the many complex angles of this strange story of oriental love. For reasons inexplicable to the Occident, these two unfortunates felt that the crime of murder was not as great as their initial sin of infidelity. 
It is a tragic note that an innocent little child should be made to pay the price for their passion. Thank you, Chief Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, you can get further information about the true police cases featured on this program by reading the Calling All Cars News. The latest issue, profusely illustrated in colors, contains true detective stories and unusual movie and radio news. It's free. Just look for the independent Rio Grande service station in your neighborhood. Drive in, ask for your copy of the Calling All Cars News. Our independent dealers are glad to hand you this gift. You are under no obligation to buy Rio Grande cracked gasoline. This is your narrator, Frederick Lindsley, bidding you good night for the Rio Grande Oil Company. <laughs>